Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Dominic and I am the host of the Android Factory. Thanks for tuning in to another episode. In the last episode we covered handling events via MVVM and the live data. Uh, so if you missed that, go ahead and check that out. I'll link a card in the top right now for you. Uh, but otherwise, we're going to go ahead and actually combine our uh, or, or start building out a relational database, right? So inside of our application, we have a way for the user to add categories. We have a way for the user to add items, but we don't have a way to tie these two together. If we go ahead and take a look at our item entity and our category entity, I'm just gonna split them so we can see them both. We can see that the item entity has a category ID on it and that should link to the ID that exists here for our category entity. So the idea is that the, these two entities at the moment are going to exist as two separate database tables and the user can change the contents in either one of those tables independently of one another. Right? So they can add categories without adding items, they can add items without adding categories, or they can choose to do both, and then we're going to give them the capability to, under the hood, tie those together. So I have uh, found the article here to define relationships within Room. I will go ahead and um, uh, link this in the description of the video here. But we're going to take a peek at something like this, right? So there's, imagine a user object and a playlist object. In our case, these are going to be mimicked by uh, the item entity and the category entities. So they can, you can basically create a, a single entity that then contains both of those entities, right? So you can annotate the um, user or they annotate the user here with the embedded, and then they define the relationship of this variable here. So this variable, this object here, the playlist object, its parent column user ID is going to match with the user created I, creator ID. And so this is just a way to uh, basically tell Room, hey, take a look at this particular field from this table, and then that should match this other field that exists in a different table. So let's go ahead and uh, build that ourselves here. So I guess we could, they're both in the same package, so it doesn't matter. So we're going to call this the item with category entity. It's going to be a data class and we can actually do a little bit fancy stuff here. Uh, maybe we'll do it here because we just have a tiny bit more room, but now we have a way of, uh, or we, should, we are going to build a way to tether these two together. So we're going to go ahead and say at embedded val uh, item entity, which is going to be an item entity. Uh, and then we, so I guess we could do it this way, right? And then we're going to have a uh, category entity and this uh, what was it called relation is going to be defined as the parent column so parent column is going to go ahead and be the category ID and entity column going to be the ID. So if we look at this, the entity column here is one way to look at it for our category entity is going to be this unique identifier and then the parent column is going to be the name of the field that exists on our other entity, uh, which you can see here is the category ID. So we're just instructing room that the item entity should have an ID in this uh, variable that should match one of these category entities that exist inside of our database. And because we're using the UUID uh, as the unique identifier for this, uh, for each category entity, we should not run into any collisions or any issues like that. 
however, if we did want to then open it up to be a one-to-many relationship, where let's say a particular item entity could have more than one category associated with it, we could do so very easily. Um, literally, all we would actually need to do is do this, <laughs> um, and then we could like maybe change the name of this uh, variable, but and then that would go ahead and uh, and do that. But for our sake, we're just going to leave it as a single. Uh, you know, like a one-to-one -one relationship, but just know that you can basically support one-to-many with very little uh, additional work. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to need to do is go into our item entity DAO and actually go ahead and update this, right? So right now we have a way to get all of the item uh, entities out of the database. However, that would just result in, you know, this category ID looking like some UUID, but really we want to surface these objects, a list of these objects instead, that will have our item entity, all the data we need in it, and then also the category entity, so then we can actually get the name of that category at the top level. So in order to do so here, we can go ahead and say function get um, all item with category entities. I'm just going to follow the same thing here. We're just going to leave it as flow for a uh, list of item entity with no, item with. Okay. Uh, but our syntax here is going to look a little different here. We're actually going to go ahead and take this annotation here as well. However, we need to add an annotation here. And so we actually need to go ahead and add this transaction annotation. You can see that outlined here in their documentation that the query itself doesn't seem to change, but we also need to add this little additional annotation here. And the reason for that is because under the hood, remember these things are in two separate tables, right? There's a table of items and a table of categories, so there's no way to just SQL speaking here now. There's no way to just make one query and access you know the different tables and combine them into one particular object and then return that object. Uh, you know you're gonna have to there's going to be a joining process that's going to have to happen where SQL or Room is going to go ahead and join the item entities with the category entities and then return a conglomerate of those two, which we've defined here in this new entity. Uh, but in order to do that, it needs to operate under a, a, a database transaction, not just a single query. So we just need to add that little transaction annotation to it. So at this point, we are ready to go. We are ready to go ahead and use this uh, function here. So just going to go ahead and get all item with category entities. Uh, item with category entity. Boom. Just like that. And so now we're actually ready to use this inside of our repository, which I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste. And uh, well, maybe we don't actually need to change it as much, or we don't need to add it as much as we can probably just remove this one. Can't really imagine a scenario where we're going to want no item entities. Yeah, so for now we're going to leave it just to, um, just in case we need it, but maybe we'll come back and go ahead and just like delete the, uh, all those options there. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and duplicate this item with category entities live data. It's going to be an item with category entity. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate that and get all items with that. Blah, blah, blah. Item with category entity live data. Right. So, that will summarize that. Uh, okay, so now we're able to use this here, and we actually use this in our home fragment here at the moment. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, probably consolidate all, all of these here. Um, 
And so now the issue is going to be that we're going to have to just do a small refactor of our uh, view layer here because everything operates off of these item entities and we've now added a new object here, the item with category entity. Uh, so we're just going to have to go ahead or I'm going to have to go ahead and update that. So just give me a second to go ahead and uh, refactor these things. is non null is null parameter category entity ah interesting so this right is saying that it is mm, very interesting so because we've populated our database here I don't think it's gonna come up but because we've populated our database here with all of our uh, category IDs being empty it goes ahead and tries to run our, uh, basically trying to run the queries to formulate this object. And obviously an empty string is not going to match any of the IDs that exist in the category entity table. So it was trying to put a null variable into a non-null, uh, a, a null object into a non-null variable. And okay. Now we are back to normal here. Everything looks good. We can go ahead and take a look at it. We could possibly even, you know, update that particular item. Everything should be fine. Um, there's no, there's no reason why this stuff uh, anymore should be broken. And that's because we've actually, under the hood, we've separated these two items, right? So any kind of modification of the database when they go ahead and change the priority level on this one. Uh, it doesn't actually impact the category table at all. All it does is just mess with the data inside of the entity, uh, item entity table. And so because we can kind of keep those two things separate here, all of these are still in place. We can go ahead and add more categories to them if we really wanted to. Uh, however, one thing that I am thinking is, I believe... I want to see if I can not know. I wonder if I can add ah, no, I got it. it would just be silly. Um, I was wondering to just add a a dummy one in there that didn't have an ID, so all of our, what am I doing? I can literally just modify this. Uh, well, so we can stick with grocery store. Does that work? Yeah, so grocery store now has an empty. So let's go ahead and see if our, um, <clears throat> where is it? Where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? Inside of our home fragment here, we can go ahead and check our items. Uh, all of our items here have a. Oh, yes, of course, I forgot that already. I didn't have to rerun it. 
but now our category is the ID is blank and we now have the grocery store as the ID. So I don't know if I love that. I don't know if that's gonna mess us up down the road, but uh, now you can see that all of these actually have the uh, grocery store category associated with them, which is kind of cool. And so now we're gonna have to go ahead and uh, you know build a way or, or update the UI so that we can actually display the category that it's associated with. And I guess it's a pretty good idea to keep this as a nullable category because I guess it's possible the user, like it's not going to be a requirement that they have to select a category, but it would just be a helpful piece of information. So I think it's a good idea to actually go ahead and uh, leave that as null. And some of these will have categories on them, some of them won't. And then we'll have to update our... Um, we'll have to update our... Uh, the screen here so that we can actually go ahead and select a particular category that exists uh, for this item that we want. So uh, we'll get to that in the next episode. I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more. See ya.